Excellent. Here we are. Hello. Hello and welcome, um, citizens of LinkedIn. <laughs> Lovely to have you here. Thank you very much for joining us today uh, for Procurement Leaders LinkedIn Live. Uh, I'm Steve Hall. I'm a product manager with Procurement Leaders, uh, and I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Alex Mutter. Alex, I'll be introducing you in just a moment, but um, I, I, I'm, I wanted to really kind of set the scene. Why have we brought you, you guys here today? Um, we wanted to talk around um, the importance of strategies to to improve supplier relationships. And this is something procurement leaders is, has really been conscious of in uh, particularly going, you know, in 2021, going into 2022, is there's a lot of expectation being placed upon uh, procurement in particular to forge the right relationships, to be able to, to drive more collaborative relationships with suppliers and not just in that small pocket of strategic suppliers, but even more broadly um, to foster resilience. This is something that's clearly a key, key theme. It has been in the last 18 months or so visibility, performance, there's a lot at stake here. Uh, and procurement needs to think about how it can adjust its strategies and have the right tools in place in order to support that drive. So that's something we're gonna quickly drop in, ask a few questions to Alex here and see if we can uh, uh, offer some insight and importantly, answer your questions. So if you do have any questions, please don't uh, hesitate, do drop those into the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Or if you just wanna tell us your story, what you guys have been up to, what you're seeing, uh, it would be great to hear from you there. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm going to uh, just, Quickly, before I get into the questions, Alex, it's worth saying, you know, Alex is a MD head of enterprise, uh, EMEA for Talia, um, formerly HSBC, Deutsche Bank, ABN AMRO, a, a long history of working in trade finance, head of trade and supply chain solutions, um, capital markets, head of working capital, head of supply chain solutions. We have the man here who can tell us a lot around how uh, capital flows throughout the supply chain and how organizations need to work with suppliers to make sure that that uh, works smoothly and correctly and can support these decisions around supplier relationships that we need to need to get to. So, Alex, hopefully that was a, an, an accurate introduction. Welcome to the call, sir. And um, for those who don't know, maybe you can help just give us a little bit more about what Talia do. Hey, thanks, Steve. And hello to everybody. Uh, yeah, um, Talia. Talia actually is a leading provider of working capital management solution and helps companies best manage, access uh, the value tied up in their supply chain. Uh, a network of 2 million businesses uses Tolia's technology and the company's processes over $500 billion every year. Tolia is, a trusted, is trusted by the world's largest businesses. We have clients including in several industries, but including Airbus, AstraZeneca, and Vodafone. We provide several solutions for both buyers and suppliers, including supply chain finance, dynamic discounting, e-invoicing, and supplier management tools. There you go. A nice overview there. So let's let's get into the topic. Uh, I mentioned you know, some of the things we see here at procurement leaders, um, but you know, supplier relationships they've always been important. Why are they? Why is the spotlight on that now? Do you think what's what's at stake here? I think over the past few decades, there has been a steady increase in the responsibility of procurement departments around the world. This is a subject that has a great deal of in depth of uh, relation to ideas such as meeting cost cuff out targets, implementation of category management, implementation uh, or running strategy, sourcing initiatives, and a move from functional orientation towards process optimization. This is actually a topic that can be discussed in greater detail, but ultimately companies are aware that they must integrate and collaborate with suppliers to remain competitive and to take the next steps toward procurement excellence. Supply relationship management, SRM, has been seen as an opportunity for organizations to grow, as there are a few businesses acting as early adapters with truly world-class SRM abilities and certain SRM processes are relatively new for a lot of companies. As for why yeah, these relationships are so important right now, I should say um, it is the consequence of a variety of businesses, business developments. To call out a few, it's about the globalization and the geopolitic dependencies, a more demanding customers, shorter product life cycles, supply chain disruptions such as the pandemic has caused. Uh, I think rare materials to manage raw materials and shortages of goods like we are facing just with semiconductors and uh, a number of soft commodities, the ongoing pressure on managing reducing costs, social pressure regarding corporate social responsibility, 
Each of these requires a more developed approach to supplier management, which can often be aided with us of superior te technology. I think in the past, the focus has been very much about profitability and cost. Today, the trend is to establish resilient relationship with suppliers, reduce dependencies, understand the individual performance of the individual suppliers that contributes to the overall success. And I think that's important. So, uh, 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 so hi to everybody in the chat that I can see adding in their comments there. Thank you for that. Uh, one question that kind of came in for transactional sourcing activities, how much effort should be placed into the relationship? I think that's something that we are, you know, that I think it, listening to what you've been saying there, Alex, something that we're suggesting is perhaps changing in that, sure, you can't have deep relationships with everybody in the supply base for every in every situation because that can be a real challenge uh, given the size of some of the organization's supply bases and supply chains but particularly when you look at something like ESG sustainability as you were talking about you look at risk and resilience it isn't just enough anymore to say we we focus on the 20 percent at the top everybody else we don't really know very much about them I guess what I'm I'm, I'm looking at is how, I wanted to ask you how do you see those relationships evolving with some of the pressures that you were were outlining there? And do you think perhaps that we are looking at more of the supply chain that is kind of in focus here rather than just the 20% of the top? No, I think there is uh, no doubt sustainability is um, key for the strategic long-term growth and health of the business. Multinational companies are coming under increasing pressure from regulators, investors, and customers to take more responsibility for the environmental, the social, and the governance impact of their supply chains. And, and options such as uh, supply chain finance are allowing large corporates to leverage their superior credit rating to provide working capital to suppliers via partner banks or by using its own cash, like uh, dynamic discounting. There's a great potential of introducing greater sustainabilities with the SCF model by offering financial incentives for suppliers that meet certain env environmental criteria, social standards rated by third party uh, agencies. Considering procurement can often represent over 50% of the total cost, there is both a financial and a moral obligation for those in procurement to take responsibility for ESG. I think further, there is a need to avoid damage to reputation if ESG is not taken seriously. And additionally, to move toward digitization offers great sustainability potential. I think, you know, a blameless record at home can mean nothing if evidence of bad practice is uncovered by a supplier in the network at the other side of the globe. Indeed. So, you know, this isn't this idea of a transactional sourcing relationship while it does exist um i guess there's more pressure on more to, to have that visibility or more of the supply base but 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 alex why is this so difficult i mean to play devil's advocate here for a moment we you know we procurement would often i guess like to have more control more visibility more understanding within the supply base you know what, what's been stopping them why are they not able to make these strides why maybe are some of the people who are listening today, what, what, are, what are the real challenges that are stopping them from yeah. being able to have more access to more uh, visibility into their supply base? I think uh, putting an um, ESG procedure in place can be seen as um, super complex as it sits across several departments which need to share the same objectives. I think this is uh, um, a challenge on its own. Then digitization may be a solution as it offers sustainability potential while remaining relative straightforward. Um, let me give you a couple of examples, um, I think, um, for which we already have seen best practices. Um, uh, to move into e-invoicing reduces the need of paper. I think this is already a, a very straightforward um, a type of, of solution. Um, and then likewise, an inventory management solution can also mean less travel time for in-transit goods and reduce as well, um, carbon footprint. Uh, better data analytics can also lead to fewer errors and help companies better manage their risks. Um, and, and cost is another potential challenge. Innovation and sustainability require long-term orientation. However, uh, KPIs are typically focused on, on short-term optimization. 
Uh, nevertheless, I think ESG needs to be incorporated rather sooner than later as the benefits and importance of ESG significantly um, overweight the challenges. And I want to take a moment just to have a kind of nod to, to the mention there of, of innovation. I mean, if, if procurement can foster more collaborative in, uh, relationships, we're seeing that it isn't just um, the very mature, advanced procurement organisations that are able to kind of foster supplier enabled innovation increasingly organizations are able to tap into that if they can have the right relationships with their suppliers but again that's a that's a, that's a kind of a big if so you've outlined you know some of the challenges um beyond you know having a, having a good strategy having having good staff in your team which is i guess maybe maybe not a given but is, is clearly key what what levers do you think people who are listening today and, and procurement leadership in general uh, have in order to make the shift we're describing in order to having more effective supply relationships and more broadly? There are, of course, many inter internal adoption strategies such as capabilities and compositions of procurement may need to change. Um, orientation and focus of teams may need to change as well. I think time allocation to spend more time with the suppliers. I think Steve, you mentioned it already. Um, is it's a, a shift of focus, and roles and engagement with internal stakeholders may need a review to foster the alignment and collaboration. Again, uh, make better use of digitization. Software is there to support to make things uh, easier. Absolutely. And, and, and I guess that's where, you know, tools like Talia would, would come in. I mean, it, it, you're going to need a more comprehensive stack. You're going to need a lot of different tools to to, to, to understand who your suppliers are and to manage them effectively. Um, but I mean, this is something where you, the work that you guys do around um, working capital, that's going to support those relationships and make that, particularly on the payment side, make that easier. Yeah, ab absolutely. I think um, you know, I think we can consider um, uh, two areas, um, um, and, and I think this is very much triggering, um, um, uh, you know, the, the focus. Um, it is meeting customer demand, and it's the optimis, uh, optimizing supply chains for cost, services, and resilience. And, and I think consumers increasingly have the expectation for quick and seamless on-demand delivery. Mm -hmm. uh, this will require companies to collaborate more closely with their suppliers. And there are also high expectations for companies about trust, purpose, and sustainability. Uh, business and their leaders will increasingly be required to demonstrate these values as both millennials and generation Z consumers are likely to make a particular effort to support businesses uh, with values that match their own. It is also important in regard to ESG goals that this is expected to become a firm requirement. On, on the cost, service, and um, resilience side, as business has grown more globalized, I think supply chains tend to go into the opposite direction, to become more regional. We see a lot of uh, nearshoring projects across all industry verticals. The pandemic reinforces this value as being closer to the end customer, leads to a higher degree of control. However, the pandemic has also highlighted the importance of diversity in the supply chain beyond a single country or region. Um, the other impact on the pandemic um, has also been the need of greater understanding of the supply chain network as such as where the supplier suppliers are located. So it goes beyond tier one and it includes also tier two to get this stuff uh, in order. And again, I think I can just underline the importance of technology in being able to further understand the activity within complex supply networks and optimize the balance of cost against risk cannot be understated. Uh, I think a CPO at the end is expected to become also a steward of data. Um, so uh, two great points that I really want to ask you to expand on there. So one, <laughs> talking around that element of you know, balancing cost against risk, I mean, I, what I'm conscious of is that there could be people listening in particular, it's going to depend what industry they're in. But if you're listening and you're thinking, my industry has been fairly hard hit, um, you know, cost economic pressure is really the name of the game. It's what's in front of me at the moment. I know that that's what's going to be a priority for my business, and that's going to 
trickle down into how I deal with my suppliers, the cost pressure that I have to, to deal with. How do you think you square that priority, that business priority with what we're saying elsewhere, which is that you need to be able to focus on those relationships and you need to be able to develop those because that's the key to some of the other objectives that you need to hit. That, that seems like it's a tension. What, what do you make of that? What would you say to people who are thinking about that problem? I think, you know, we have very um, uh, real cases um, uh, um, to, to learn from, you know, when you just, be off, you know, when, when as from a procurement viewpoint, you're just looking for on, on costs and don't get into the alliance and, and in, a, in a strategic partnership, you know, you may overlook a lot of critical values on top of it. I think in, in the past, it was pretty much, um, 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 you know, um, a, a, a demand uh, a role of procurement today is much more strategic. Um, if, a, if a supplier fails, that can hurt you a lot. And I think the pandemic has seen this, how dependent you can be. And it's not just the suppliers on its own, um, um, uh, I think, uh, performance. Consumers are super, super scared, you know, that they, 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 are in, they, they consume stuff or they're buying stuff, you know, for businesses that don't do right. And I think um, this, this, uh, like I said, you know, the, 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 also the new generations and the expectations on, on, on business behavior has changed completely. So to fail in this business, you know, and to, uh, um, you know, to, 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 you know, I think to cause issues on, on ESG, you know, if you, uh, you know, the environmental, the social aspects are becoming socially so important. I think the risk for the company is just too high. So I think just focusing on cost is, is not right. It has to be balanced. Of course, uh, there's still a profitability target, but it has to be balanced. And we see a lot of clients that are combining their targets with additional objectives. And ESG, uh, supplier health, is definitely something where also supply chain finance helped a lot to support business and its continuity. Absolutely. Um, and so I, I, I appreciate I've hogged a few questions there. Guys, if you have questions for Alex, that you please do put them in the comments. I've seen it. We've seen it. We've had a couple already, but don't hesitate. But one I did one thing I did want to draw back on, because I think it's an interesting comment, is um, procurement as a, as a steward of data. You referred to that earlier. Can you expand on that a little bit? Because we, we're talking about how procurement can help the organisation and almost like this, this kind of renewed role where procurement can kind of... Um, provide insights from the supply chain, provide collaboration from the supply chain, work with them on ESG. But can you focus in a little bit on that data steward piece? What do you see changing there potentially? What's the expectation? I think, um, let me give you a practical example. So, um, uh, you know, with one of our clients, we achieved an, an, a sustainable supply chain finance solution. And it was actually Bridgestone. And it was key that uh, for them that um, they rate their supplier portfolio by certain criteria to apply to their ESG standards. And as better they apply and perform under these objectives, the better is their rating. So on the data, this is an additional data stream because you put on top of all the commercial uh, um, uh, data, uh, you put a, an additional layer of information. So you have to be, you know, to understand what is the rating today, what is the, um, uh, the, 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 the change of data. So you need technology to manage this uh, uh, incremental data stream. And this has been embedded in a supply chain finance uh, program. So first of all, the suppliers become incentivized. So this is a bit a carrot approach. Uh, you know, the supplier gets the carrot, uh, you know, to be incentivized if he behaves well you know, and the, 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 the rating improves, you know, the discounts of the financing goes up. So that means they are, they are, they are, they are, uh, they are, their cost of financing becomes more attractive. So they are incentivized by more attractive financing to apply to the, to the objectives. But all this data to manage this, you know, uh, the commercial side, the financial side, and the sustainability side needs to be streamlined. Has to be a this has to be embedded in a straight through data flow process. And this is there, there where the technology can help to, to first of all, to make to, to increase the visibility or to, to use the, the, the increased visibility to make the right decision. Excellent. And, and uh, just a quick acknowledgement. Hi to everybody who's, who's commenting in the chat there. If you do have, um, maybe you've, you want to share, if you, if you, for example, if you 
you supply chain finance or explored it maybe that's something you want to share in there and uh, let us know because it'd be you know alex has kind of been talking about some of the benefits there um one question i did have alex that i wanted to, to go to so if, if someone's listening to this today and they're thinking okay I, I i take your point there needs to be uh i need to use digitalization i need to use um the capabilities in my team to improve supplier relationships what do you think they need to do what are, what are the steps that you see that maybe we're not necessarily taking or not taking fast enough what do we need to do to try and get there so that we are where we need to be for say 2022 what do you think uh, usually what we see with our clients uh, in particular also caused by the issues I, I i refer to pandemic or rare source of of uh, of goods um, i think clients look into the the purchase to pay process and identify you know where do they have um uh issues you know what are the, the you know the time to value uh, um, um, uh, cycles and um, a lot of things is you know how purchase orders are managed how invoices are um, um uh, getting issued improved received you know where are uh, the risks like i said uh, paper uh, needs to be digitized uh, to be uh, to be you know streamlined in their operational setup, and also how long does it take a, 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 a buyer to accept an invoice? Uh, and in, in, in many times, you know, you have still twenty to thirty days, um, or even you know, I think even ten is is, is 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 too long, because you destroy value. And I think these are areas where where where, where procurement is looking into to see how can I streamline the process, how can I use. Uh, um, um, you know, adequate software, and then also, how can I support my objectives? What are the solutions? And again, we see, uh, you know, beside of e-invoicing, we see a huge demand of supply chain finance to be ready for um, the unknown. I think, you know, the big issues in the pandemic was that there was demand to inject financing. And even the, you know, even the, the buyer would be prepared to inject the liquidity into the supply chain. There was no infrastructure. So it was a high risk to make early payments to them. It was, it was, uh, there was no infrastructure. The, 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 I think the buyers who have been able to use uh, infrastructure, they could extend their solution to new suppliers. And with, for example, we have a full digitized uh, onboarding, uh, um, uh, digitized uh, platform we serve our suppliers. And the onboarding takes us roughly, technically 90 seconds to get it onboarded. So this is really, um, you know, um, um, a rescue program. This is really a program where you can support the supplier health agenda. So I think be, be prepared, you know, understand, you know, the issues you have in, from the purchase to pay cycle and, and, and be prepared for the, for the un, um, unforeseeable, but also learn from the issues you have been facing in the past. Uh, final question for me then do, do you, you you mentioned that the approaches that were being te being taken i guess when we say in the pandemic we're thinking in the early days in 2021 um uh, do, do you think um the mindset has changed in terms of how people are thinking about the availability of credit their their willingness to kind of use emergency measures to support can you maybe speak to that for a moment yeah absolutely uh, i think you you always see early adapters and if you look and how 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 businesses is developing um you see early adapters they really make their 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 supply chain their physical and the the, the financial supply chain uh, um uh, you know crisis proven um and 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 the others will follow so just what i said that uh, um, the physical and the financial supply chain becomes more commingled um uh, to really uh, uh map this out and to see you know what what is the the physical supply chain strategy and how can this uh, um, uh, be supported by my financial supply chain strategy and it should be shouldn't be kept separate i think this always when you see uh, i was referring earlier to the different stakeholders and decision makers in in the company i think it's very important and you see this even with the uh, early adapters with the leaders here that they are very much integrated in their decisioning process they have same targets they, they um, have the same agenda and then execute working capital agenda, cost reduction uh, uh, targets and digitization projects as, as one team. Uh, so there's, there's quite an alliance. And I think this we will see more and more. And I think this also will change both, both roles from the procurement uh, CPO as well as from the finance director that they have uh, incremental 
incremental um, 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 uh, roles to play. And I think I said, you know, that um, CPO becomes a stu uh, you know a steward of data. I think the same counts for the finance department. That's absolutely the same. Mainly the same data, you know, because they have to understand the entire uh, value proposition. Uh, but the uh, the um, cooperation and the alignment is key for success. Excellent. I mean, it's a critical point to land on in thinking about the, the evolution of procurement and how what we need to do to get there. Um, exciting stuff, but hopefully if you're listening, you've, that's provoked you a little bit in terms of thinking about where you're heading next, where your team's going, what you need to do to get there. Um, I want to say a big thank you to Alex. Alex, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Excellent. Bye. And thank you very much for you guys Bye. out there in LinkedIn who've joined us. It's been wonderful having having you here on Procurement Leaders LinkedIn Live. You can see in the chat there, there are some links. If you want to check out a little bit more about Talia, marketplace.procurementleaders.com uh, slash Talia on there, you can go and find, find them through that. Um, certainly you can find more materials around uh, this particular topic on there as well. So we'd we'd love to send you in that direction or reach out to Alex directly on LinkedIn if you want and see if you, uh, you can connect and, and connect with him there. But um, thank you very much for joining us. It's been wonderful to have this discussion with you, Alex. And uh, please do join us again next time. Thanks, Steve. Bye-bye.